Check it out, Casper! Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Casper here, and welcome back to another video where we look at some trivia about some TF2 hats. And today's topic is some hats in TF2 which you can only get by buying a real-life physical good. This will make sense as we go through, so let's just start straight off with the Grand Master. Now this is a TF2 hat you probably don't see very often, and the way that you get this hat is to buy a promotional chess set. So that might sound a little bit odd, and that's because it is. Although, of course, chess is a game. TF2 is a game. And at least the chess pieces are actually TF2 themed. So if anybody out there likes TF2 and likes chess, then you're definitely going to like this. It will set you back $100, and it's no longer being made. So if you do find it in the store, make sure that's a brand new copy if you do want the in-game promo, because there's a very possible chance that the promo code will have been used. But this hat is particularly cool, because it actually came out before killstreaks, but it's got a killstreak mechanic built into it, and depending on how many kills you get, the actual appearance of the hologram on the top of the hat will change. It's such a unique mechanic, and I don't think I've ever seen this hat in-game. This could easily fit into the rare hats videos that I've already covered. But nevertheless, this looks pretty damn cool. The next one I want to talk about is possibly one of the craziest stories I've ever heard related to an in-game item. It's the boiling point. Now, this isn't a hat, but it is a taunt, and its origins are similar in the sense that you have to buy a physical good to get it. And now, you might be looking at this and thinking, oh no, that's just the table tantrum. But if you look closely, it's actually got a different cooking item on the table rather than just a normal pot. It's got what's called a sous-vide. Apologies to any French speakers out there who uh, I've just insulted with my horrible pronunciation. But it's a type of cooker. It's this little white thing that sits inside the pot and it helps cook whatever's in there. And the way that you get this item is to buy one of these cookers in real life. Specifically from this one retailer, Jules. And this is going to set you back $199 or only $179 if you go for the other version. A princely sum to pay for such an incredible in-game item. The story behind this, I can hardly believe that it's true. And it gets crazier as it goes through. It started off with Gabe Newell winning a meal cooked by a very highly regarded professional chef in a raffle. So <laughs> that to start off with is a bit of an odd thing. But he went for this meal and he was mind blown with how tasty it is. And I know there's going to be memes about Gabe Newell and food, but let me carry on. So I think he ended up sort of befriending one of these chefs and he actually gave some money to the chef. I'm not sure if it's a business investment, but that sort of thing to help him start the company or at least work on the product that you have to buy, this sous vide, this dual sous vide cooker. But part of the reason that Gabe got so invested in these guys, both emotionally and financially, is because they really inspired Gabe's son to get into cooking. So basically, he really appreciated this company. He really like admires them, he admires what they're doing, and he likes the product that they produce. So it certainly sounds like Gabe wanted to pay them back via a video game. So basically, there's going to be a few people in the Team Fortress 2 world who have gone out and bought these cookers because of Gabe Newell. Because these people want to get the taunts in game. Or in general, it's just sort of raising the awareness of the company, which is it is always going to help whether you actually go out and buy this particular cooker or not. It's really bizarre that you buy an apparently random kitchen appliance in order to get an in game taunt, which looks almost identical to an existing in game taunt. But that is the story, and that really is just amazing. There's nothing quite as exciting as that in the rest of the video, but there is still some very big ticket items, and believe it or not, we haven't actually seen the most expensive thing yet. I'm going to talk quickly about something most of you guys are aware of, but it's these NECA Merc figures. Now, if you haven't seen this about, these are still reasonably available, and you can actually get a couple of them. I don't think the whole series is available, but you can get a couple of them on the official Valve store. And here in the UK, some of our comic book retailers still have them on their shelves. What you get for buying these action figures, which retail between $20 and $30, is an in-game hat, and these are common hats, but what you get is a genuine version. So it doesn't change the appearance, but it is a particular quality hat that this is the only way you can get it. So if you see anyone wearing a genuine genuine version of the respectless rubber glove, for example, which you get for one of the uh, colors of the pyro, then you know that they've got that via promo on these figures. Slightly related, but this time much more coveted, is the Robo Sandwich. Now this is just operates like a completely normal sandwich, but it is robotic looking. And the way that you got this is by buying a real life 
plastic sandwich toy from a Comic Con a few years ago. And just like the others, you got a promo code then for this item in game. If you do care enough about Heavy, which I'm sure the two of you guys out there who main Heavy, you might actually want to go out and get this, but it might be hard to find because it was primarily only available at this Comic-Con, but they did also release, I think, a limited run on the Valve store as well. So again, if you are buying this secondhand on eBay or whatever, be very careful because the promo code might already have been used. Sticking with the theme of the Valve store before we move on to our most expensive item, we've got the Balloonicorn, Archimedes, and the Spy Crab. Now, you've probably at least seen the first two in-game because they, again, they come in normal version. But the Balloon version of the Balloonicorn and the plush Archimedes Archimedes, again, will get you a genuine version of these misks in-game. But the Spy Crab can only be obtained by getting the plushy Spy Crab. There's no normal version of the Spy Crab which can be obtained in a different way. You can't get it from a drop. You can't craft it. The only way you can get the shoulder Spy Crab is if you buy the plushy. And this is about the only physical good I think I will personally go out of my way to get in order to get the in-game item. Now, if only the shipping costs on We Love Fine weren't ridiculous. So a few moments ago, we looked at this pyro and this heavy. But let me introduce to you this pyro and this heavy. Now, these might look like pretty cool ornaments, I guess you could say. And they are. I'm sure they are. But the heavy will set you back $220. Now what you get in-game is, again, a limited promo item called the Little Bear. But, rather insignificantly, you only get a genuine version. This item can still be obtained by crafting or by buying on the store, for example. So you don't even get rewarded that well for spending $220. But it might interest some people, and honestly, if I had the disposable income to buy ornaments like this, I would probably buy things like this to have them around my house, because it does look cool as hell. Now, the pyro is slightly different, because you can't just buy one. You have to buy the double pack. As a result, that will set you back $400. And the only thing you get is a genuine nabbler, or nabbler, depending on where you're from. Again, just like the little bear, this can be obtained any other way, but this particular version is genuine. So if you ever see somebody wearing the genuine nabbler, or nabbler, depending on where you're from, they've got a very expensive, two, in fact, very expensive pyro ornament somewhere in their house. And we're going to end on a high note, a cutesy little hat called Horace. You actually get this from subscribing to a rock, paper, shotgun, which is an online gaming news site. The minimum that you can subscribe for is six months, which I think will set you back around $20. Or if you very much like the platform, then of course you can go for the 12 months, which works out a little bit cheaper. And in game then you get Horace. I don't actually read rock, paper, shotgun, but I'm actually tempted to subscribe and get this hat and check them out because really he is really cute isn't he forgive me guys a new challenger enters the fray i almost forgot to mention the tf2 vrh which of course stands for the team fortress 2 very rectangular headset and it might look like a vr headset a virtual reality headset to you and that's because it is based off the oculus now this goes back to all the way back when oculus was the big player in the vr market before steam or sony or anyone else had really revealed their big VR headsets, Oculus Rift was up and coming. Now you could actually buy the Oculus Rift dev kit and then you've got a code to use this in-game. And not only if you had this on in-game, but if you were actually in VR mode, the headset would glow around the edges. So if you ever see or ever saw somebody with this headset on and it was glowing around the edges, they were actually playing TF2 in VR. Of course, since then, Valve have released their own headset, and I'm not even sure if you can even enter VR mode in TF2 easily without some weird little hacks these days, but this was it at the time. This was the forefront of VR, and it's really cool to know that TF2 was a player in that time. So that wraps it up, guys. Those are all the hats I know. On the screen right now is a couple of my other videos about cool hat stories, so check those out if you like this, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and goodbye. I love you guys. Special